Hey, Pussy Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today we're going to be talking about reverb that sounds big. Reverb usually is made to make things sound far away, not big. And we're going to be using it to make things sound bigger. So there's two ways I've found that work really well. The first way is I have this example right here. This is for my track, This Is House. And it sounds, that at the beginning it starts out like this. Just as itsy bitsy doo doo doo. Over here it gets a bit bigger, bigger. It grows, it grows. So we have something like that. And it sounds, it does it. I mean, it sounds like it's far away and I have delay and reverb and a couple other things, but there's also an element of, this is a very big thing that is very near to me. It's very close. And so the question is, how do you accomplish this? Well, this one, actually the secret doesn't lie in the reverb directly. It lies in what you let go through the reverb. So there's a lot of high frequency content in this sound and because there's so much, so it's this sound right here. <laughs> So it's going through this, there's actually nothing on the channel strip itself, but it's being sent and this is being automated on this verb and delay send. And I'm also automating the filter to come up. As the filter automates up, it lets more high frequencies through. It goes through this initial reverb, which is nothing special. It's just a, a general algorithmic and I have some filters engaged, just a little bit of cutting going on. But it's because I'm letting so much high frequency through, it's just... It's just super, it sounds like it's really close because we associate high frequencies with proximity to an extent. So for example, if you're walking up to a house and there's like music blasting, you're gonna expect to hear low frequencies because that goes through objects easily. But high frequencies will be absorbed by the doors and the windows and the just the building in general. It's gonna have a problem getting out. So when you walk up to a house, as soon as, let's say we're watching a movie, they open up the door, the sound designer should let the high frequencies through because now there's nothing absorbing them and so it'll be more realistic because we'll hear it and it'll sound closer or a lot closer to the sound. There's nothing in our way between it and the sound. So that's one way to make reverb sound bigger. There's another way. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and engineer one. So here we've got a, a just general saw wave. I'm gonna take it down because it's probably pretty loud. All right, cool, right? So let's just say that that's our sound. And there's the delay when I hit the key. So that's kind of, yeah, I, I didn't change my buffer. So uh, what we're gonna do is instead of doing the reverb here, we're just gonna go to channel 25, cool. And we're just gonna add a reverb so that we, we're familiar with this reverb. So here's the reverb, right? Fruity reverb two. So first we want the high frequencies to get through. So we're gonna actually do this. It's a little backwards, but you can hear the highs getting through now. Now, what makes this thing a thing is a very short decay time. If we shorten the decay time to about a second, which is what I've done here, we will get something that sounds much bigger. And since it's so short, it feels like a small room. The result of it sounding like a small room will make it feel close. And that's how you get a big reverb sound. And what you could do is you just turn up the, now we have early reflections and wet reflections. So if we have more early reflections, it'll also make it sound a bit bigger. So if we were to like write out a line, so let's just go ahead and make a line, new line. You hit F4 to start a pattern, but I cannot type right now. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we'll just go ahead and play some like big power chords. Whoops, this. So that's something that people oftentimes want to sound big, but they resort to these enormous delays to uh, these enormous reverbs and stuff to do it. And it sounds a lot messier versus something like this, where our reverb is actually contrarily, our decay time is very short versus first off, it just doesn't sound as powerful, but it doesn't sound as big either. If we go under a second, we'll actually begin, well, in this case, probably more close to 0.5. But as we get shorter and shorter and shorter, it will adjust the actual timbre of the instrument. It'll, because it'll act more like a delay sound and it will cause phasing differences. So if we bring this in a bit closer. See, at this point, it doesn't even sound like reverb. So we want it to be out there, maybe. And anyways, that's pretty much the secret is just a high, be careful about your high frequencies because that's a big indicator to how close or big something is. Well, not necessarily big, just close. I guess we're going for how to get really close sounds realistically. And then also we are looking at the, uh, the decay time because if it's a very long decay time, it's going to indicate that it's not very close. So we want a reverb time that sounds really close. So it's something that is very useful when you're trying to make something sound bigger than it is besides uh, EQ. So then we can follow this up with EQ techniques and stuff like that to really get something that really sells the size. 
and then we could layer it and do a whole load of other things. At this point, you know you're mixing. You do things that make sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Shooting stars fly on by in the sky where you're meant to be. Gravity is chained to your